A decade of battery headlines has trained many people to sigh. Every few months, someone claims solid state is finally here, and then the date slips again. But something shifted in 2025. Instead of slides and lab photos, there are pilot lines, factory floors, and test cars on public roads. One brand is taking pre-orders with a semi-solid pack at a budget price. Another just proved a huge range in a real sedan, not a bench test. So is this the moment hype turns into hardware, or just better marketing with a new label? Let's sort fact from hope right now. The Credibility Crisis Solid state battery used to mean one clear idea, an all solid state battery with no liquid inside. Now it is a messy umbrella, and the constant deadline slips have made people suspicious. When analysts tore down Yoshino's much-hyped cell, they reportedly found liquid electrolyte on both the anode and the cathode side. That did not mean the tech was fake, but it showed how slippery the label has become. Some firms call a pack semi-solid if less than about 10% of the electrolyte is liquid. Others use a tighter bar, calling it quasi, only when liquid drops below about 5%. And many companies do not agree on those thresholds at all. Some do not even measure liquid content. They define the term by range, charge speed, or safety outcomes. It is like discovering that a favorite ice cream is legally a frozen dairy dessert. There is no solid state version of a food regulator to set one rule book. So the label is losing meaning fast. In practice, the end user cares less about the label and more about results. If a pack can charge fast, go farther, and resist fires when damaged, the liquid percentage matters far less than the daily experience behind the wheel. The reality check from researchers. Even with better demos, solid state still has to survive what engineers call development hell. Industry analysts keep warning that prototypes are not the same as high volume production. One research leader at ID Tech X, speaking to Forbes, said progress is real, but large scale commercialization is still years away. The expectation is that bigger production volumes in mainstream vehicles may not arrive until the early 2030s. The forecast is also sobering on scale. By 2035, analysts predict just over 100 gigawatt hours of solid state capacity, while the total EV market could be around 3,800 gigawatt hours in the same year. That gap is not a small miss. It suggests supply chains, factories, and validation cycles will take a long time to mature. It also hints that many early solid state packs may start in niche roles, not mass market sedans. Skepticism is not cynicism. It is a response to history. Toyota floated 2025. Samsung hinted it was close. QuantumScape's early promises sent its stock flying. Yet most drivers are still using familiar lithium ion packs. So the smart question is not, who has a cool cell? It is who can build millions of them cheaply with a consistent quality. Until that is answered, every claim deserves a raised eyebrow, even when the lab data looks impressive. What looks real today? The strongest signal is when a company puts a battery into a vehicle and lets it face the messy real world. In China, SAIC Motor opened pre-sales for a new MG4 model in August, and the headline claim is a semi-solid state battery. It is not a solid design. The reported liquid content is around 5%, which puts it in that gray area between quasi and semi, depending on whose rules are used. SAIC says the pack passed harsh safety trials, including a three-direction needle penetration test without smoke. Outside reports are thin, and it is not always clear whether the tests were third-party or in-house. Range figures shared at a media event point to about 537 kilometers, or 333 miles, with an energy density near 180 watt-hours per kilogram. Charge speed is still the missing piece, and early availability may be limited to a higher trim. Still, the price talk is striking. Roughly 102,800 yuan, about 14,290 US dollars. On the premium end, Mercedes-Benz has been testing cells from Factorial Energy. 
Factorial opened a solid state plant in Massachusetts in 2023 and has spoken about both its FEST quasi-solid line and its Solstice all-solid platform. Mercedes completed a long-distance road test using an EQS fitted with Factorial Solstice technology and reported 749 miles on a single charge. That is not a perfect lab number. It is a car moving through normal conditions, which matters. Who is close, but not there? Pilot production is the last gate before true mass manufacturing, and several big names are now at that gate. QuantumScape, working with the Volkswagen Group, put its QSE 5 cells into the Ducati 521L electric racing motorcycle. The company cites about 844 watt-hours per litre, and says the pack can charge from 10 to 80% in roughly 12 minutes. Volkswagen has described the output as race-ready, and the cells are tied to QuantumScape's faster Cobra separator process. The schedule has still slipped. By 2025, samples were shipping to launch customers, with field testing expected in 2026. Solid Power and BMW are developing a sulfide-based all-solid battery for a BMW i7 demonstrator. Sulfides matter because they can fit roll-to-roll -roll equipment similar to today's lithium-ion lines. Solid Power has claimed cells could be 15-35% to cheaper than some rivals, yet official updates keep stressing that more development is required, which sounds familiar after earlier, more hopeful timelines. South Korea's SK On talks about warm isostatic pressing to cut porosity and raise density, with figures near 800 watt-hours per litre. Sealing and automation have been tough, but a pilot facility in Daejeon opened in September, and the target date moved up to 2029. Nissan is aiming for 2028 vehicles, and is leaning on Lycopy's dry electrode methods to skip solvent-heavy steps that add time and cost. The promise is lower cost, but the pilot work is still young. The problems that rarely make the headlines. Solid electrolytes can be picky. Some work best when warm. Others dislike moisture. In cold climates, a pack that needs extra heating may waste energy just to reach its sweet spot. That adds weight, cuts range, and raises cost, shaping where the tech can roll out first. Then there is lifespan. Dendrites, the needle-like growths that form as a battery cycles, do not vanish just because the electrolyte is solid. They can still push through solids and create internal shorts. Designs try tougher separators, better current control, and pressure management, but none of it is free. Another quiet enemy is the Solid Electrolyte Interface, or SEI. It builds up on electrode surfaces, consumes active material, and slows lithium-ion flow. Capacity drops and resistance rises. Even a simple contact is hard. Liquid electrolytes flow and keep touching the electrodes. Solids can crack, shift, or leave tiny gaps as the cell expands and contracts. Those gaps raise resistance and speed up aging, so companies add pressing steps or composite layers to keep everything tight. Finally comes scale. Lithium-ion has decades of factory learning. Solid state needs new tools, new quality checks, and new ways to catch defects before they spread. That is why prototypes can look great while mass production stays stubbornly out of reach. So is the solid state age here? The honest answer depends on what here means. Under the solid state umbrella, some projects are still lab bound, like recent reports tied to Huawei and DICP, where readiness might sit around a mid-level technology score at best. Other efforts have reached real-world demos, which push them closer to the level where a system can be called field-proven. Pilot plants land even higher on that spectrum, because money is being spent on repeatable processes, not just clever chemistry. But none of that turns a deadline into a promise. Dates like 2028, 2029, or 2030 are better treated as ambitions. A pilot line is a test, and tests sometimes fail. That is normal. The issue is that the industry has trained the public to hear next year and translate it into never. The clearest take is also the simplest. Labels matter less than outcomes. If a semi-solid pack is cheap, safer, and good enough, it can still be a win. 
The MG4 story hints that solid-state adjacent tech can reach buyers without luxury pricing. The Mercedes road test hints that range gains can be real outside a lab. And the pilot lines from QuantumScape, Solid Power, SK On, and Nissan show that large players are no longer just talking. They are building. That is why the best stance is cautious optimism with healthy skepticism. The next wave will also need transparency for buyers. Third-party testing, clear cycle life data, and honest charge curves will matter as much as big range numbers. Without that, the buzzword problem will return fast. Progress is visible, but the revolution is not guaranteed. The next few years will reveal which approaches can survive mass production, and which ones were only good at making headlines. For now, the story is not solid state has arrived, but solid state is finally leaving the lab. Some packs will still use a little liquid, and some will fall short of early promises. Yet real cars are running real miles, and factories are being built to learn what works. If charge times keep dropping and safety keeps improving, drivers may care less about chemistry labels and more about convenience. The next checkpoints are simple. Durability across seasons, consistent high volume output, and prices that compete with lithium ion. Until then, skepticism is reasonable, and curiosity is essential for everyone beyond demos, 